Inside the Line, Real Stories by Real Cops, new episode. We really appreciate you guys. We hope you share us and like us and tell your friends about us. Interesting thing, though, sometimes we have these little, not quite a production meeting, but we have these production meetings before the show. And the fascinating thing to me, Dale, is that after 70, what is it, 77 episodes, 72? I, I think this is our 79th. 79th. After 79 At least 78. Episodes, okay. <laughs> after all those episodes, I love the fact that you still think that I listen during the production meeting. Well, you should, Dave. There's a lot of good information that I'm trying to pass along to you, David. But you want to know what I, I find confusing? First of all. Oh, I know what you find confusing. What's that? Math. Math. So this week's podcast, The Keys to Solving a Murder. I like this idea. Means oh. opportunity and motive. And you know something, Dave? You've been along for around 78 podcasts. Yep. Somewhere around there. And all of them. Up to this point, I was hoping you would have come along a lot better than you have because a lot of times you still question my investigative ability and you question yeah. what i'm saying dave I, I just don't think that i don't i i it's not that i'm questioning it i'm just asking well i am questioning i just question sometimes whether the idea of beating a victim until he confesses is the best way to actually it's probably the not truth. the best way <laughs> i don't think it happens that much anymore <laughs> But this is going to be for you, at least the beginning, Dave, it's going to be Criminal Investigation 101. And at the end, I want to give you your junior detective badge. Ooh, By the get, time we get into the meat of the podcast, Dave, and we solve a crime. I can't get just get a sheriff's badge like a junior. Like you, most Walker. people start out as a junior detective. Is that what, is that what they start out as? Uh, pretty much, do I, I guess Do so. I get a decoder ring? What's that? Do I get a decoder ring as well? I guess so, Dave. All right. All right. So, but before we get going, Dave, before we get into this, I need two shout outs or at least one shout out. I heard that we have some fans or some listeners from UMass Boston. I Excellent. heard through the grapevine. Excellent. So if they're listening, get back to studying because whatever we say to you might send you in a wrong direction. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and also Thanksgiving coming up, Dave. Yes. And I heard you're going to be at the Pine Street Inn, which is a homeless shelter in Boston, from 2 to 4 on Thanksgiving Day. Oh, is that right? That's what I heard. <laughs> and I heard you're not doing a free comedy show. No, I'm not. Am I, I, must be, I must be feeding the... Uh, the no, the, you're absolutely the, not the feeding them. What, what am I doing? Well, I look across the table <laughs> and I say you're a comedy mogul. Yep. You're in a top 10 podcast with yours truly. Yep. You'd have enough money, but you're going there to eat to get a free meal. <laughs> <laughs> I had that come up today. What's that? I'm on campus yep. and they've got a food. They, free turkeys? Like a farmer's market. Oh, really? But I, I couldn't take it. Oh, it was free it. food for the students who, who don't was, have enough money? Yeah. Of uh, students and anybody else who, who doesn't, they're, they're like, I can sign you up. And I'm you like, want to know why they don't have enough money? Because the school is raping them for 30000 a semester. <laughs> That's why. This is a community college. They're not doing oh, it. Oh, okay. Not, my they're bad. They're not doing it to them. Um, but the guy, I actually had to pat my belly and assure the guy that I was not food insecure. Oh, all right. <laughs> and he looked at me. He said, yeah, you're right. You don't look food. Are you ready, you ready to get rolling, Yeah, let's Dave? go. I want to solve a crime. So this, before, Hold on. Yes. Before we even start, I can tell you the answer. Colonel Mustard in the drawing room with a candlestick. There you go. <laughs> Am I close? <laughs> close enough. All right. So before we get going, and what we're going to be actually talking about today, we're going to be talking about the brutal murder of four Idaho University college students on November 13th in off-campus housing. We're going to go over means, opportunity, and motive because no murder can be solved without being able to identify these three factors. Unless, Dave, unless what? Unless you're right there. Unless you're you right there and the cops unless, roll up. Unless the cops roll up and they say, what are you doing with that knife? And you say, uh, I just, just killed my wife. I just killed these people. Short of a confession. Anyway. Well, yeah, short of a confession or short, or short of being caught red-handed with the smoking gun, you have, to, you have to go through all these factors, means, opportunity, and motive to try to solve the crime. So means, definition, simply put, the manner in which a person died or the weapon or weapons used to kill them. Some FBI stats. Yep. Right around 2019 homicide data. There were around 13,922 homicides. Out okay. of those homicides, around 10,258 were committed by handguns, rifles, shotguns. So 75% of the homicides that year were by the way of a gun. So 1,591 were other weapons, 
poison, drugs, Ooh. explosives, vehicles. Yep. 1,476 knives or cutting instruments and 600 or so fists or feet, meaning you were involved in a street fight. Okay. Someone beat someone to death yeah. with their hands or something that like that. That can happen. All right. So we got means down, Dave? Yep. All right. Opportunity. Who could have killed the person? Only somebody in their vicinity. So all- Unless you poisoned them. Unless yeah, you could you could poison someone, Dave, and you might not find out about it. There may be no evidence left other than the poison. Most the very say. common poison is um, antifreeze because it tastes sweet, and they mix it with Gatorade. I told, I told, hint, I think, hint. I thought, I think I told hint, you. Hint. Yeah, you think you who you? Mrs. X, the X Radigan, Mrs. X Radigan, uh, Mrs. X Radigan, former Mrs. Radigan. <laughs> she's fine. She's okay. She doesn't have to worry about a thing. All right. So all so, investigations. When you look at opportunity, I, I told you this. Yes. I covered a. I covered the Ant Wessel murder. Did we do this on the podcast? Yeah, we've done it before. I'm sorry. Okay. All right, forget it. But that's that was the, somebody else in the courthouse had allegedly murdered their wife by putting antifreeze. Oh, anti- in a absolutely. She she used to uh, run. Yeah, my wife loves antifreeze. I got her used to it. <laughs> <laughs> so all investigations for opportunity will begin with the closest person to the victim. So someone dies. They're going to look at family members. They're going to look at the husband, the kids an ex-lover, current lover, friends, and the stranger, that infamous stranger. Yeah. They're so far outside the opportunity continuum. There's just a little caveat here. Let me ask you, I'm going to give you a little quiz question, Dave. All right. You're a police officer. You respond to the death of a six-year-old child. The mother Ooh. wakes up and at 7 in the morning. She says, my daughter, six years old, is missing from her bedroom. You do a search of the area. She's dead in the backyard. Head trauma. Who's the first suspect? The mother. Absolutely. Yeah. That's kind of a common one. That's a basic one. In regards to opportunity, when you're talking about children, most good parents will not allow a six, a five, a four-year-old kid to wander aimlessly without supervision. So those people are the most likely perpetrators of that type of crime. That's basic crime scene 101 with missing children or deceased children, things of that nature. To you and me, people who love our children... In spite of everything, they're slamming doors in the middle of a podcast. The choice of boyfriends. The choice of boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever. We would never even think of that. But there are parents, parents who kill their kids. Are there any parents who kill their kids who aren't either psychopaths or seriously mental ill? Oh, absolutely. What's the motivation behind it? And that's another thing we're going to talk about is motive. But yeah, it's it's such a difficult crime to kind of wrap around your head. It makes no logical sense right. to an average person. So, all right. So, so, me, so means... An we're in opportunity right now. Yeah. The next subsection of opportunity, are they physically able to do so? So if someone runs another person over with a car, you have to ask yourself, does the suspect, does the person we have in mind, do they know how to drive? Do they have a car? Obviously, Something as simple as that. Obviously, they're not very good at it. Oh, they're probably not that good at it either. <laughs> well, someone is beaten to death, Dave. Yep. Let's say a 40-year-old bodybuilder, 6'2", 250-pound solid muscle, is beaten to death, and your main suspect is a 13-year-old kid. Is that kid physically able? Does he have the opportunity to do that to someone so much bigger than him? Do you have to kind of look at actors like that? No, we're not saying that it can't happen. Absolutely a 13-year-old kid could. David and Goliath. Absolutely. Yeah. But those are just little factors that you look at. Okay. Now, were they in the area at the time of the death or the or the assault? Was the suspect oh. in Mexico and he has tickets that says he was in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico this, on a cruise? Part of the plot of every Columbo ever. Which which is Herp is is always got an out of the country. Alibi, alibi out of the country, out of the theater, out of this, out of that. Yeah, it, but, and it's about how how reliable is your alibi? Right. Who's who's claiming that Dave Radigan was in Mexico. We have no evidence you were there. You said you drove. You, have, you, you didn't cross the border. What did you do? You have my. <laughs> How'd you get there? You have my pictures at the airport. A man who looks just like me with dark glasses and a sombrero. There you go. Yeah, I've seen the Colombo. And all, they also look at phone records because yeah, if you're in the area of of a crime. Most people have a cell phone, yep. and whether that cell phone's on or not on still triggers data into cell phone towers, and they try to triangulate a location of a cell phone. So you have to find out, was the person physically or was he actually able to be at that location? 
Yeah, so there's a lot of there's a lot of factors out there that you have to determine before you can say someone has opportunity. And the last one is motive. The reason behind the murder, Dave, it's been said you find out the motive, solve the murder. Who had reason to want that person or persons dead? Who didn't? <laughs> In your who, case, who didn't? Let's say it's my There's case. There's a whole list, a laundry Think of list all of the suspects. That Dave, want me dead. It's a long list. Every crime is different. There's no cookie cutter format that fits every crime because you may never solve. You may never know the motive. Like a serial killer who kills and rapes and abducts right. seven ladies or yep. seven young kids. Yep. You catch them. They go to trial. And they just sit there and they smirk at you. They say nothing. You ask them a hundred times, why'd you do it? They'll either say, I didn't do anything. You got the wrong guy. You're never going to necessarily know true motives. But that's that's the psycho. The flip side is a female is murdered. So who do they suspect? They suspect the boyfriend. What's the motive? Oh, he was jealous. What if he wasn't jealous? What if he was the <laughs> nicest guy in the world and he wasn't jealous? So these are some just... examples of motive, Dave. You, you hit the first one, domestic. Yeah. Whether it be husband, oh, wife, always. son murders his father because the father's been beaten up on the mother. Yeah. Whatever the case may be, <laughs> some sort of family relationship. Right. A random fight, Dave? We roll out of a comedy show. You run into that comic, Nardizzi, who steals oh, your jokes. Nardizzi. You get into a fist fight. Oh, you punch him, he falls to the ground. That's a homicide, possibly, Dave. You could be uh, you could be in prison for the rest of your Mutual life. Mutual combatants. Mutual combatants. Mutual combatants, that not Disney. Political or Should religious? Have... Political or religious political views, or religious? views, Dave? Absolutely. In this country? In this, in this country? <laughs> political? Come on. Well, didn't Pelosi just get attacked because of his political views? <laughs> I, Maybe. Was that? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, we, we've we, gone we, through we, that a hundred go times. Right. Should we have another one? An abused person kills their abuser? Yes. And I'm kind of surprised that just scout leader is still alive today. Uh, <laughs> Wasn't there some issues with you, with you back in the day when you were around 12? Little David Radigan? There was uh, <laughs> there was a uh, now nah, well not gonna, I'm not going to talk about this because this again brings us brings us away from the all right it does nobody was nobody was murdered but yeah somebody I mean this is a fairly common thing somebody's an abuser and so either either um, it's a domestic abuse and somebody rises up against that person at some point we have abuse we have man. greed insurance or, scam robbery payback jealousy oh, what you just talked about yeah. payback and jealousy. Yep. And the the complete psychopath, just for the thrill of it. And ultimately, Dave, the list is never-ending because motive is what's in the killer's mind. What they perceive is happening, their reasoning for killing whoever they're killing. This was the reason. Rational or irrational. All right, Dave, you you like this mood music that I'm trying to set you in? I like it. You like it? I like it. What are we going to do? We're going to solve something? Hopefully, Dave, this mission for you is not going to be impossible. Are you you ready to solve a murder, Dave? I'm ready. All right. We spoke about it briefly at the beginning, but we're going to go into the Idaho University murders that happened about 10 days ago. So I'm going to give you some background information. There's a lot of information, so I'm going to kind of try to keep it nice and precise. So three female roommates and a male boyfriend of one of the girls went out on the town Saturday night into early Sunday morning on November 12th into the 13th. They were out in Moscow, Idaho, population 25,000. Okay. It's a university town. All right. You sure it's Moscow, Idaho and not Moscow, Russia? Oh, <laughs> Moscow, Russia. Oh, there you I go. Just wanna, I just want to get that on That was a good one, Dave. I didn't pick up on that. A lot of people don't realize that there's a Moscow and Russia. Yeah, there is, Dave. I live there, like I told you before. <laughs> so the four victims, two and two, two of the girls went out to one location? Yep. A girl and her boyfriend, who's also a roommate, went out, but they came home separately at around 1.45 a.m., early Sunday morning. And and they went to separate places. Separate locations. They weren't... Like they out in town and, yeah. and in like a, a frat party or something like okay. that. Now, also in the apartment. So when these four victims get home, in this apartment is two other roommates who were not killed. Now, sometime between 3 and 4 a.m., this is based on some cell phone records that they have with two of the girls who were speaking to an ex-boyfriend somewhere around that time. They were killed between 3 and 4. Two victims, two girls on, say, the second or third floor, and a boy and his girlfriend on the third floor. Nine hours go by, Dave. Yes. Like I said, this is a key point here. There's six people in the apartment. Four of them are killed, three girls and a boy, and the other two roommates are not killed. Okay. I they don't even wake up. I know what you're thinking of. 
Well, we're going to get into that shortly. Yeah. So at around 11.58 a.m. Sunday morning, some eight, nine, ten hours later, the surviving roommates notice that one of their roommates isn't breathing. So they call 911. Cops show up. Now, there's a bone of contention here because there are reports out there that the cops showed up and did not properly secure the crime scene, which in turn may have contaminated the evidence, whether it be DNA evidence, footprints, whatever evidence is there that we don't know about. It may have been contaminated by the roommates that survived, some of the roommates' friends that they called and showed up prior to the cops even getting there. So whatever the case is, I think initially in a crime like this, if the crime scene isn't immediately roped off yeah. and preserved, there could be issues going forward. Right. And also, the police of this small town are also being criticized for initially saying that, oh, this was a crime of passion. No one else is in danger because the killer just focused on these four, which unfortunately, the only way to determine that is if there's more murders going forward, that was a real wrong conclusion to say, yeah. say to people. Yeah. Now you let your guard down because the cops are saying, oh, don't worry about it. We kind of know who it is. We don't have them in custody yet. That's kind of the, what they initially said. They're backtracking on that now. Yeah, they All should. the news out there right now is that we don't know who it is. Stay alert. Stay alive. So that's the information we have. A lot of it is kind of piecemeal. So we're just going off of that. So right. Now you're an investigator, Dave. Means, opportunity, motive. So it's been reported yep. that it was a large knife. It's been said, however, this probably isn't 100% accurate because I don't know that they necessarily know, but they mentioned K-bar, meaning a military-type knife. Okay. I have one right over there. Look behind you, Dave. I have a K-bar. You want to know who has K-bars? Ex-military, hunters, people like that, and psychos yep. also have K-bars. So let's just say gotta it was-, buy, it was I got to buy one of those. You got to buy one. Let's just say it was a K-bar-type weapon. A K-bar- in New York City, that would be a kind of unique weapon. But yep. a K-bar in, a hunting, in Idaho, in a hunting community, yeah, that's, that's not thinking. a unique weapon. So I think those initial reports aren't going to really have a lot of bearing on how they find out who this person is. Because a knife is a knife, unless it has real, real specific marks on it that they can match up to the wounds in the body. Yep. If they can match that up, then yes you might have the murder weapon. You don't necessarily need the murder weapon to solve the murder. Okay, and the K-bar knife is, again- It's a real it's macho common. type it's, knife, I was, military I was thinking, macho. I was, thinking of, I was thinking of male, but you know something? A woman could always handle a knife. Well, we are gonna get into the opportunity section yeah. that to some of the damage that was inflicted on the victims, it's been assumed that it took a lot of force meaning a male. Or a strong female. Or a very strong yeah. transgender female, Dave. Yeah. Why strong? Why, why, why transgender? I don't why know. Why not just say a strong Well, it's a female. male turning into... Because I'm trying to be politically correct, Dave, all right? <laughs> you're, you're failing. You're failing. All right, so you know something, Dave? I'm going to go back around 30 years. You all should right. remember this. A very similar case. August of 1990 in Gainesville, Florida, a drifter from Shreveport, Louisiana, Danny Rawling, he killed three people in Shreveport, and then six months, seven months later, he wound up in Gainesville, Florida, where he broke in to a few residents and killed five college students, four from the University of Florida and one from Santa Fe College. Yep. He used the K-bar, okay. and he stabbed them all to death. He duct taped them. He raped the females. So he killed four girls and one guy. But that was a rape and... That was, yeah, that was a rape. Sexual assault, murder. So that's just yeah. that's just a similar case. I'm just throwing that out there. That stuff like this happens, and they it was just a drifter. Someone living into ago. the woods. Thirty two years ago. Yeah, thirty two years ago. Okay. He killed eight people all together. You want to know something, Dave? This ain't going to be an easy one to solve. I see you spinning in your head. You're saying, "Hey, it could have been this Rollin guy." Yeah, sure. But guess what, Dave? What? 2006 lethal injection. Danny Rawling is dead. Oh, he is not a suspect, Dave. This one ain't going to be solved right. this easy. <laughs> all right, fine. I'm, think, I'm still thinking copycat, but copycat. all right, fine. Yeah, it could be. There's fine. a lot of things going on here. There's a lot of copycat things. Copycat psycho. Pay attention. This is this right here for this crime. 
Yep. Opportunity is going to kind of be the key here. Oh, this is going to solve the, roommate, the crime. It's one of the roommates. Uh, well, this is gonna, we're going we're gonna to go through the whole list. All right. So according to news reports, there are many possible suspects. However, the police department has spoken and they've said, no, we interviewed the suspects and we've deemed them not a suspect. Now, I don't have a lot of faith in this police department. I think it's a small town police department. They haven't had a murder. The last murder they had was seven years ago. So they don't necessarily have a lot of experience with this type of crime. So you bring in the FBI, and we all know where the FBI is right now. Yep. Now you get the state police. And I always have faith in the state police, even though they're a little arrogant, but they're usually very, very professional milita- military type guys. And they're going to go right by the numbers here. Okay. So I have faith in them. All right, so let's look at opportunity from the closest inner circle. This could have been a murder-suicide, meaning out of the four people that were dead, one person killed three of them, then they committed suicide. I went to a call like that years ago. Boyfriend killed his girlfriend, sliced her throat, went downstairs in the basement, waited for the cops to show up, stabbed himself in the chest and killed himself. Why does he wait for the cops to show up? That's, maybe he was waiting for the cops to shoot him. That could have happened, I think, in this incident, from what they're reporting, multiple, multiple, multiple stab wounds. Right. So a person who commits suicide isn't going to stab themselves 10 times. They're going to stab themselves once, slice their own throat, and it's going to be over. So that right there, the murder-suicide, they would have called that right out in the beginning, and it would have been over. So that's not an option, but I'm just saying that that could have been an option. What if he's got really bad aim? Yeah, with a knife? (laughs) With a knife. Now, this is the option that I think people are looking at. The roommates, the other two roommates, whoever those people are, they haven't been identified yet. They allegedly were sleeping at the time of the murder. And when they woke up eight or nine hours later, they discovered their four other roommates or three other roommates and and the boyfriend deceased. Let's look at this a little bit more, Dave. There was a dog that lived in that residence. Where those people were murdered, there was a dog that was there, Dave. (sighs) Now, roof, 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 roof. <laughs> there's no report from anyone in the area. Like, cause, and they had some witness, not witnesses. They had neighbors who they interviewed, and they didn't necessarily say anything suspicious. A right. barking dog at 3 in the morning wakes up people. We go to calls all the time for barking dogs. No okay. barking dog. Right. So what does that tell you, Dave? I like Dave? that. I like that. So there's no barking dog. My dog. You come into the house, Dave. It knows you now. But initially, it'll bark at you, it'll growl at you, and until it knows you're a friend or it feels safe around you, it will not leave you alone. So why did this dog not bark? Is it a friendly dog? Is it deaf? Is it blind? Is it 30 years old? Or does this dog perceive this person, this killer, as a friend or someone it knows? But even if that's the case, if somebody is murdering people. Yeah. That's not going to get the dog's attention? You would think it would one way or the other, but I don't know that a dog knows people are being murdered. I'm just trying to say, why did this dog not react like a dog who's protecting his turf? Yeah. Why? Yeah. There's a reason for it. It's got to be, probably got to be a reason, and and you're probably right. Yes, I've revised my my theory. All right. We'll keep on going, because I got a little bit more on this. Colonel Mustard (laughs) in the bedrooms with a K-bar knife and... (laughs) A milk bone. <laughs> a milk bone to pacify the dog, <laughs> Dave. Pacify. I like that. That's a yeah. good one. <laughs> so you have to look at the sur- the surviving roommates, and you have to interview them and say, hey, what time do your other three roommates typically get up right. on, on a weekend? If one of the girls, let's say one of the girls that was murdered, is a diehard, yeah. you know, she's a gym rat. Yeah. Regardless if she gets out at, out, out at 2 in the morning, she's out drinking, she comes home at 4, She's up at 8 o'clock every day. She's going to the gym. I'm up every day, Dave, 6.30, going swimming by 7.15. If I'm not in there by 7.15, people who I swim with were like, where is he today? Where's Dale? Right. So what was the behavior? What was the lifestyle of the victims? And the roommates know it. Now, there's a food truck guy. There's some video of a food truck guy. Two of the girls, two of the victims were shown on video talking to a guy at a food truck. They're in line at a food truck getting some food and they have a conversation with some guy. Okay. The police have said at this time, they spoke to that guy. He's fine, whoever okay. he is. Driver? They, let me ask you, yes. Let me, let me ask you a question. Ongoing investigation. 
somebody, this gets out on social media that there was a food truck guy. There were pictures and all He's that. not the food. He's just a guy in line at the food right. truck. And, the, and so the cops say, we've talked to him. He's fine. Maybe they have talked to him. Maybe, he Maybe they want they, him to believe he's right. fine. Yeah. yeah. So th- this, there could be some, and there should be some dynamic here that the cops are keeping everything close to the chest other than we can't keep you safe because we don't know who this guy is. Yeah. You need to protect yourself. And we're trying to do stuff in the background. And yeah, they're not going to let the suspect know he's a suspect because they want him or her to go about their regular yeah, business. Right. So absolutely, Dave. You're, you're getting you're very close to that badge, Dave. Watch a lot of TV, bro. <laughs> I've watched a lot of TV. Now there was a driver. Someone dropped off two of the girls at around 145. I believe they identified him. He's supposed to be fine. I don't know okay. if he was an Uber driver, just some guy that they hailed down for a ride, whatever the case right, a was. Friend, right. Something. There was some cir- circumstance they gave him a ride. Yes. And well, again, but just two a- good-looking girls, Dave. Any random pervert would give two good- good-looking girls a ride, wouldn't you? I would. <laughs> would. Would I? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a random pervert. Yeah, you I are. I know you rando. are. <laughs> you are a rando. But I mean, here's the thing about this. A, a guy at a food truck who's talking to a couple of teen, uh, of college girls. That's a stretch you know, to say uh, that he's a murderer. Right. <laughs> That's right. a stretch. Right. But okay. it's the last people who saw these right. people alive. And you want to say, too, and here's the thing. Something like this happens, and the food truck guy says... You know, they were telling me they had some creep talking to them, blah, 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 blah. Now they've got something. Yeah, maybe, absolutely. Maybe, maybe. All right. There were some phone calls the two girls were talking to, and I believe it was one of their ex-boyfriends. There was like seven or eight calls up until around 3 o'clock. Now that person, I believe it's the ex-boyfriend, with all those phone calls going back and forth. And that shows when people are calling each other back and forth, when we go on domestics at like early in the morning, and they're fighting and they're texting each other back and forth because one girl, the girl's saying, where's my boyfriend? He was supposed to be home at two and she's hanging out with this guy. So you'll see a lot of domestics at two or three in the morning and they're calling each other a hundred times. Yeah. Was this that situation? Was it that situation? But I would think too, you you probably have a lot of, probably get breakups that, that get s- sloppy. Yeah, and, this just and could have been a bad chatty. This could be the ex-boyfriend could just be in a bad situation oh, can you at imagine? the wrong time. I know. Right? Yeah, at the wrong time. Now situation? he's like a suspect. He's either feeling maybe a little guilty or feeling glad that he was able to, you know, get out of the relationship and now they or maybe he's feeling bad that he couldn't have the relationship and now they have this conversation. Maybe he's and, feeling bad that he didn't come over when she said, "Come on over. Yeah. We can we can do a two-on-one." He's thinking maybe I would have maybe I would have intervened with the murder, or there could have been five people murdered. You don't know how yeah. that would have worked out. It's crazy. We don't amazing. know who we don't know but, who it is. But imagine if he's not involved in it and he just had whatever he had for conversation with his ex, and then finds out she's been killed. Let me ask you a question, Dave. Yeah. If a couple of girls called you up and said, "Dave, come on over, two on one. Quicker you get here, the quicker we're going." Yep. Then they also said, "But you know something? There's an escape murderer in the neighborhood." You could die just getting here. Would you go two on one or getting murdered? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> you're asking, if you're asking young Dave. Young Dave's rolling asking, the dice, baby. Uh, young Dave is rolling the dice and he probably is, 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 is at the house without even the use of a car. There you go. Uh, older uh, Dave now would be more like, eh, there's some pretty good TV on. And the last, last kind of scenario is just the unknown psycho unknown psychopath and you want to know something the only way you're going to determine this one i hate to say it is that if time goes by and this person kills again yeah because if he's a psycho and he killed four people the way it's being reported stabbing them brutally to death right he will kill again whether he kills in idaho or he goes to california or he goes to florida you may not ever make the connection but here's the thing about yes and we know this stabbings tend to be very personal. There's a lot of emotion behind it, or, or it's a psycho and he's getting off on the because because uh, if you if you look at um, it's called psychosexual homicide. It's the plunging of the knife into a victim that is like him having sex with her, oh. like he's ramming her hard. Oh man, with his male genitalia, he's ramming the victim hard with a knife. It's the same euphoric feeling huh. i've been told dave yeah. i don't have personal experience you sure, you're sure you haven't had a couple of t- yeah, psychosexual homicides what it's referred to you, you haven't dealt with a couple couple of incidents for, <laughs> for two and a half minutes and then been 
All right. Anyway, now this is a little caveat, Dave. This is yeah. kind of this was just reported this, a few days was, ago. Yep. Go ahead. So there was a dog killed a few weeks ago within a few miles of where this homicide happened. The dog was filleted. It was skinned. Its throat was cut. It was filleted. Crime scene people or criminal investigators would look at that and say, you know something? Killers, especially serial killers, real sadistic killers, will practice on animals. Yeah. Jeffrey Dahmer, watch his special, watch his new documentary. He killed squirrels. It, but he would kill squirrels. He would a, kill but, wildlife. And that's a gateway. That's a gateway. He's practicing. But, but that's a big jump. Craft. It's a big jump from going from. Oh, it is. From a, a killing a dog. Well, I've killed a few animals in my people. day, Dave, but I've never killed a human. Come on. Right. <laughs> it's a right. jump. It's a stretch. <laughs> it's a stretch. Well, here's the other thing about it. I, I, one of, one of the, uh, an early story that I remember from my journalism career was on somebody who was buying kittens, buying kittens, strangling kittens, go back to oh, the yeah. pet store. And eventually he got pet store. He was strangling kittens, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, would he ever have gone to the next level and right. then strangled a young kid or, 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 or a girl or his girlfriend? Right. And this is where, like this that, is yeah. where I, I learned about it. But but to go from from killing a dog to killing four people, that's a that's a big jump to go. You know, there's intermediate steps there, isn't it? Don't just no, start I don't think with, there is, Dave. Don't I mean, just start off with one person. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. You would think, Dave, but I don't know. I just, like I said, all, a lot of this is speculation, but it's, it's based on very sound criminal investigation measures. All right. Past history of past behavior, criminology, and victimology. All right, let's go to motive. Let's go to motive, Let's go Dave. to motive. I'm, I'm about to crack this case wide open. All right. There's a bunch of motives, but I, I kind of put five out there. First one, just a complete psycho who will most likely kill again, and kills for the thrill of it. Okay. I know some people like that. Absolutely. Yep. A revenge killing, meaning all these people, four of them were killed because ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend, some sort of a lover's quarrel, a love triangle, something like that. A robbery gone bad, that makes absolutely no sense. Because if I'm going to kill someone in a robbery, I'm just going to kill the person who... If I if I go yeah, in your house, Dave... And you try to stop me from stealing, uh, you know, your all your important audiovisual equipment for your comedy show. Oh, okay, you could probably get killed if you try to stop the criminal from doing that. Yeah. that's why you just give it to him. That's why you don't fight not me. You know, that's why not you don't me. fight these nitwits. So myself. you could get killed in a robbery myself. like that. I locked myself but in a room. Is the person going to just bludgeon four people to death over that? So it's not a robbery. And, and, and how are you going to have something like that happen without the other two waking up? Yeah, because he's yelling and screaming and fighting. So that's not even an option. A sexual assault, they're not reporting that. Yes. But I don't, they would not report that, that the victims were sexually but assaulted. He, but here's the issue. Because that would be a very key element right. in this case. Here's the issue with the sexual assault. Unless the sexual assault occurred after the murders. Yeah, because we're, we're saying that they were killed in their sleep. Nobody wakes up. That's my point. Well, Nobody some of the girls up. you've dated probably have fallen asleep when you were having sex with them and they never woke up either. So It was so, so fun. No, they woke up the next morning. And what's it, that? They woke up the next day. Now, that's a good example. What's that? Of the dog barking. Just like the dog would have barked. Yeah, we're doing and, a podcast. Yeah. And my dog comes from downstairs. Yeah. Hasn't seen Dave in a while and started barking. Yeah. And he and he and he chewed on my uh on my <laughs> And on Dave's my a leg. friendly guy. Tailing. That's what but he likes me. Dave isn't looking to murder like four me. people in here. So I don't I his the, the dog to me seems to be I'm gonna get in my I got okay. final thoughts coming oh, up in a minute thoughts? or two. Yeah, okay. I got final All right. thoughts. All right, fine. But I, I think ultimately for motive, law enforcement, they either don't know, but, but I'm thinking we have to give them a little bit more credit. They know a lot of things that they're not releasing, which is a good thing. They're not showing their hand, which is a good thing. As long as they keep the general public up to date that we still haven't found this guy, right. keep your doors locked. Threat to the public. Is the Grab your question. guns. Yep. This is Idaho. Everyone has a gun and a knife. Make sure you have it with you. But other than that, they shouldn't be releasing anything. Because if they do, they're going to show their hand. And if the bad guy is out there and he's still in the area, he may, he, well, I guess in reality, you want him to leave. <laughs> right. But he's going somewhere else. He's going to kill someone else, Dave. He's ab absolutely going to kill someone else. If, in fact, that's what his gig is. Are we ready for me to solve the crime now? Let me give final thoughts, Dave, and then if you want to give your last... Oh, you, what do you want? You want to solve the crime? No, no I'll solve it after. You give your final okay. thoughts, then I will tell you, I'll tell you what, how we did it. 
what the what the real key is. Oh, okay, here you go, Dave. It. All right. And if and, and if you in if you if you give a good answer, Dave, we're gonna pin that badge on you right here. Good. good. Perfect. <laughs> so I'm not sure how it's gonna play out, but there are some factors in here that kind of don't look too good. Why wasn't the dog in the residence harmed? Because if I'm coming into your house and I'm gonna harm people and that dog's a threat to me, I'm gonna take that dog out. Yeah. So that's the first thing. Yeah, I agree. That's, Why that's... didn't the dog alarm the residence of a stranger in the apartment? Yeah. Because maybe he or she wasn't a stranger. The dog knows that person. Okay. So we're, we're kind of going back to either the roommates or someone who's been in that apartment before. Why didn't the roommates wake up at the time of the killings? Were they so drunk? Did they have their headphones on? Were the killings silent? Did the person go into the room, stab each one of the victims a couple of times? They were unable to scream. Because if you, once you lose your breath, you can't talk, right? Yeah. So if, if they stab them so fast that they have no breath, they can't even talk, they're bleeding out, you're not going to be able to yell and scream. Is it normal for the victims to sleep that late on the weekends. Yes. <laughs> Every roommate I had in college. I'm flirting around the area of roommates, someone known to the people in that apartment. That's my thought process. And if it isn't that, it's a random maniac who's still out there, brother. All right. He could have took the train or the plane to Boston, Massachusetts. So if you understand, ultimately, if you understand the victim's behavior, what they do normally, who they associate with normally, what type of lifestyle they have normally, that's going to be a good factor in solving the crime. Victimology and criminology. All right, Dave, your junior detective badge is on the line, brother. And here's what I got. What do you got? Here's what I got. Who would be known to the, vi to the, to the, to the victims if they were roommates, they were living together, blah, 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 blah. The ex-boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend, yeah. The yep. ex-boyfriend who was on the phone, all right? So the ex-boyfriend, maybe he's got an excuse, maybe he doesn't, but he could slip in there using his old key, go to the wrong bedroom. It, I don't believe it was a forced entry. There was no sign of forced entry. Yeah. Right, and the dog's not going to wake up, and the dog's not going to wake up. Especially gonna if the, the dog knows him, absolutely, Dave. Yeah, so now he goes in, maybe, maybe. He knows where the bedrooms are. And he, and he maybe goes to the wrong bedroom and he kills the wrong, or maybe, you know, who knows what the situation is. But maybe two of them, it's mistaken identity. And then the guy and the and the girl who are together in the bed, they're the intended target. And this ex-boyfriend is... Well, it's not even... I th the ex-boyfriend would have gone into the room with the two girls because there was a boy and a girl who were boyfriend-girlfriend had nothing to do with the ex-boyfriend. Yeah, the ex-boyfriend you know is the other two girls. You sure about that? I'm just like any other cop. I'm 50% sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, Dave. I'm just, Could have been a lover's triangle, Dave. <laughs> uh, well, you know, maybe maybe there was something, you know, like that. But I'm thinking that, that probably two of them might have been, again, he might have hit two of them when he didn't mean to, and then he was trying to get the other two. All right, so, so you're going with ex-boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend. And I'm going with roommates. I think either one is pretty valid. There you go. I think it, if I was a dog right now, I'd be barking. What's that? I'd be barking. <laughs> we have a stranger in the room. The stranger Who comes is he? to use the stapler. To use the stapler. <laughs> the this stapler is what happens, Dave, used. when we don't have a top-notch studio. We need a top-notch studio. <laughs> Any transient this or vagrant is... can just wander into my house. <laughs> uh, let me tell you this. I told you, I told you a long time ago, don't give up your taser when you leave leave the force. Absolutely. And this is a perfect example of how a taser could help us out and help the podcast. All right, Dave. I thought we did a pretty good job. And I, I liked I liked your theory. I Thank liked you. your possible motive. Yep. And I'm going to pin the badge on you, Dave. You, you are hereby a junior detective as Excellent. of today going forward. Fantastic. What does it allow me to do? I don't run, know, Dave. Can I, can I run for office? You can get graph. You can, you know, you can pull people over. You can shake them down. You can, can take I, their drugs. You can, can get a free coffee, free I, Chinese food, whatever you want, Dave. Can I do what people, uh, can I do what well-placed political people do? Open my wallet whenever I have to watch. Uh, wa open my wallet, and there my there's my badge. You can go into games for free, sporting events, all sorts of Perfect. stuff, Dave. I just want to be here with you, Dale, with your barking dog, and you're chewing my uh, leg, and the vagrants walking around the studio using the stapler. <laughs> I'm happy here. Anything else? So do no, I think we're good, up? Dave. Beautiful. That's Dale. I'm Dave. This has been Inside the Line, Real Stories by Real Cops. Thank you for listening in. We'll see you next week. 